survive being trapped in time like that. And then there's our new recruit. New recruit? Oh wait, Tensei did something, say something about finding someone to take Michelle's place, didn't he? He did, and well, I don't know if it's just the situation or what, but she didn't make a good first expression. On me or Kyo? So Michelle's replacement is a girl. What's her name and what she's like? Her name's Tessa, and as for what she's like, I don't really know much about her except that she's a former cheerleader. A cheerleader? Cheerleader seemed a strange choice of person to call in to replace Michelle, but I had to admit a biologist like Rose also seemed like an unlikely person to play the role of a, a sword-wielding, time-hopping knight. <laughs> yeah, that's how they are. Listen, why don't you go on ahead? I'm sure Tensei will handle introductions, and I'd like to finish up my run before heading down. Okay, sure. Nodding Rose broke into a jog. Sure, she had taken a few more steps. She paused, looked back at me. Kenji, it's really good to see you. See you again. I mean it. I know. Thanks. Rose gave me another quick smile before breaking into a run, leaving me alone to make my way towards the lab. To the entrance of the to the lab, I pressed the call button, and a few moments passed before a familiar voice sounded. "State your business." It's me, Kenji. Ah, uh, good. We've been waiting for you. Come down to the lab. I have someone here I'd like you, for you to meet. A moment later, the elevator dinged. The the shutter door slid open. I headed inside, pressed the button for the lowest floor. After several seconds, the elevator dinged again, and the door slid open, revealing Tensai standing there along with someone else. Hello, Kenji. It's been a while. Hello, Grandpa. Allow me to introduce you to your new commander and, and operations manager. Kenji, meet Tessa, a good friend of mine. Tessa, this is my grandson, Kenji. Pleasure to meet you, Kenji. Do we shake hands, or should I bow instead? Uh, shaking hands is fine. With that, Tessa held out her hand, which took to my own. She vigorously shaking, I examined the newest member of our team. Cute. That was the very first thing I thought. When I looked over to Tessa, she was without a doubt cute as a button. Yeah, she's kind of cute. Hmm. I don't know. Not mine. She has large blue, blue eyes brimming with energy and pink hair that was done up in pigtails. She also had an ample chest and long, shapely legs that seemed to stretch out forever. And at that, at the moment, she was grinning infectiously as she released my hand from an energetic shaking. So, um, she's going to be the new commander? That's right. I've been helping with the Time Winner project for quite some time now. Though, I didn't know about the Time Winner at the time. Tensei kept that part to himself. I had Tessa overseeing another facility I had managed to secure, which have it, handles essentials like our raw materials, shipping, and handling of critical supplies, and so on. Basically, she's been making certain that our operations and the things needed to keep it going remain under the radar of the government. I see. So, Tessa, when did you find out that Tensei built an honest to good? His time machine? Not until he called me up last week to let me know he needed my help. And to be honest, when I fo found out you've all been doing and what happened and the rest of it, I thought I'd have a mega brain meltdown. I know how you feel. I remember feeling the same when I found out about it myself. So, um, if you didn't know about the time when I first then, I hope you weren't too mad when you find out that Grandpa had been keeping you in the dark. Well, I had always known he was working on something really important that he wanted to make sure nobody found out about it, so I wasn't too mad. Besides, if I had to be completely honest, if he told me he'd invented a time machine, I'd wondered if old age was catching up with his brain. <clears throat> Not that I'd blame you for that. It is a difficult notion to grasp. So, um, if you don't mind me asking, why did you choose her for this? I mean, no offense, Tessa, but... You'd still like to hear what makes me qualified for hooking up with Tensai's time, Tenshi, huh? I found myself frowning my confusion at this. Time Tenshi? 
That's what Tessa has been ta has taken to calling our little group of time travels. I'm afraid that she spends more time reading comic books and manga than on her studies. Oh, okay. We got an otaku now. Cool. Well, I figured that if we were a team, we need a team name. We're all girls. And girl terms tend to have Aintra or something like that worked into the name. And since you're Japanese... And Tenshi is Japanese for angels. Yes, yes, so you explained. And the alliteration works really well with something like this. I mean, just sound it out. Time Tenshi. It rolls off the tongue really nicely, don't you think? At this point, I was feeling a bit worried. Tensa, Tessa seemed to be as energetic, as enthusiastic as Kyo, and she seemed to be treating this like it was some kind of game. I found myself wondering if she was grounded enough in reality to handle the kind resp of responsibility that Michelle's job demanded. When Tensei looked at me, he raised an eyebrow, almost like he could tell what I was thinking at this point. And to answer your question, Kenji, Tessa's qualifications are, are that good she has skills in physics and machinery. Perhaps not as good as the other girls, as she is still pursuing a college degree, but she's still quite knowledgeable in terms of computers. She's also a highly skilled martial artist with excellent gymnastic talent. And perhaps most importantly, she's proven she's capable of keeping a secret, as well as respecting the rules I've laid out for her. That's right. Fact is, I'm looking forward to a chance to breaking out my black belt and kicking some future butt. Given our situation with Mizuki and Bunny, I decided that perhaps now would be a good time to add some extra brawn to the team of our brains. I guess I can't argue against with that. Well, it's nice to meet you, Tessa. I look forward to learning more about you. Since you're Tensai's grandson, I'm sure we'll get along. Although, would you mind doing me a big favor? Well, okay, I guess. What kind of favor? Tessa put her hands together in a pleading manner. Could you... Please be sure not to call me cute. Out of all the favors I could have imagined as I asked him, I had to admit this one didn't even close to being among you. But she's cute! Come on, girl! Why can't you be cute? Seriously, I hate being called cute. I hate it with a passion. I've had people call me cute all my life, and I really appreciate if I didn't have Tensai grandson doing that as well. I've already put it put it up with put up with it from the girls he's got running around here. I'd recommend you apply sure on this, Kenji. Well, alright, though, well, you are, well, attractive, so if the word cute doesn't, does slip out, just remind me, okay? I swear I won't mean it in a bad way. She is cute! God damn it, girl! Embrace it! Okay. I can work with that. Especially since you're Tensai's grandson and all, I guess I could let you off without breaking anything. Uh, say, breaking. Right, she's a black belt. God damn it, oh! Okay. I got a feeling that things were going to be more interesting fr from there on out. Ahem. Now that introductions are out of the way, why don't we go to the time window room? I'd like to show you some of the modifications we've made there and brief you on some changes I decided to implement. I got a bad feeling about when I heard this, but I couldn't put it down to anything other than my nerves acting up after all that had happened. So I just nodded and walked behind Tensai and Tessa. They started towards the window room. When the door opened to reveal the interior, I saw that the lab had undergone some noticeable changes. But as I tried to take in all the differences, I started I was startled when a familiar voice piped for my attention. Kenji! I had about a second to process that Kyo had been sitting near the time window with a video game controller in her hand before she tossed it aside and launched herself from a seat. Yay! Kyo, you're good. I had another second to realize that she was currently flinging herself at me. Girl, flying! Whoa! Yay! Enjoy it. If I had one more second, I might have braced myself enough for a tackle hug. Unfortunately, I had those two seconds. And as I went crashing down to the floor, nice view, nice view, nice view.
Oof. <laughs> My head crashed into the floor and while I was seeing stars, Kyo giggling in the light, hugging me tightly as she massaged my cheeks with hers. <laughs> oh, I missed you, Kenji. I'm so glad to have you back and everything. It's been so crazy and... Um, Kyo? Looking up at the mention of her name, Kyo pushed herself up onto her hands and knees. As she looked at my grandfather, I was giving the perfect view of her bouncing boobs. I also noticed that she was now basing straddle me over a certain area. Thank you, Kyo. I can just say more and more, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to look at that. I would appreciate if you got off my grandson. We do have a great deal of work that still needs to be done today. Assuming you didn't bust his skull right open when you tackled him to the floor, you did. Oh, Tessa! Tessa, don't insult Q. This seemed to spark Kyo's attention. Her, her eyes and mouth popped open as she looked down at me again. Oh? Uh, I did that? Then, su then sudden alarm registered on her face as she scrambled off me. Oh, I'm sorry, Kenji. I didn't mean to. I was just so glad to... I didn't break anything, did I? <laughs> oh, I can't be angry at her. She looks cute. And her face is adorable. Uh, just my dignity. But I'm used to that, to that taking hits by now. Here. Let me help you up before ding -a -ling there mutilates you some more. Hey, Tessa. Calm down. Leave Q alone! Hey, you don't need to put it like that! Why not? It's just true. Q huffed angrily, and it was quickly becoming clear exactly how Tessa had been able to make a bad impression on the girls here. If this was the attitude she had constantly had on display. Besides, Q, when you were busy tackling Kenji, guess who just lost? For the very first time in Revenge of the Revenger? What? Huh? You mean you didn't pause it? Michelle! When I was given time to recover and take in what ch changes that the changes that had been made to my surroundings while I'd been away. And we're just now moving on. Before there had been a messy tangled network of tubes, wires, and cables that connected the time window to all of the various devices in the lab. Those were all gone now, and there were several wells around the base of the time window, while a secondary ring had built, built around the main platform, making it me think that the wires had been concealed underneath it. Which would be smart. A couple of monitors and control panels had been built close to the time window, and one of them looked like some, like a display at the hospital monitoring someone's vital signals. In fact, Kyo had hooked the game system onto one of the, those monitors, and the game screen was showing on one of them. But the change that really grabbed my attention was a large physical plastic cylinder surrounding the time window's main platform. Completely blocking it off from the rest of the world. What? What is all this? A long overdue upgrade in terms of safety and security, Kenji. We've gone to a great deal of trouble to make certain that what happened to you and Michelle never happens to anyone ever again. It's a plexiglass shield, Kenji. Gramps and the others set it up so that we can raise it up whenever we decide to use the time window. If we had something like this in place before, I might not be where I am now. Whatever that is. It's plexiglass, Ken. Can I call you Ken, can't I? Anyway, I found it on sale after some big aquarium got shut down. It and several spares. All at a huge discount. And we keep it lowered whenever the time window's not actually being used. So next time Br Tensi Brainchild decides to, to fire itself up so it can snack on somebody else, it'll have to just go hungry. I frowned a bit as I looked between Michelle and Tessa. Michelle's... I like Michelle more than Tessa, I don't know why. Even if Michelle was a cheeky bitch in the first game. Um, Michelle told me about 
being it being plexiglass and you know. Oh, she did? Did you mention that I'm the one who found all this hardware? No, I was getting even more confused. Tessa can't see or hear Michelle, can she? Since she's never traveled through time, she's never absorbed any of the quantum energies that flow through the time stream. And since what you see of Michelle is essentially a quantum energy be construct being projected by the time window. Okay, but if that's the case, then how can you see and hear her? You've never been through the time window either. That's a good question, Kenji. I've wondered about it on and off myself. And the other thing I can come up with is with when the time window is activated, it releases quantum ammunition into our dimension. Not nearly as much as those who encounter those encounters while actually time traveling, but since I've been working on the time window for over two years, perhaps there's been enough cumulative exposure to allow me to perceive Michelle as well. Don't forget, there's still a great deal we don't know about time travel, Kenji. We've only just begun to scratch the surface of this new world of science, and so there's still a good deal that we don't understand and can't predict. Which is one of the things that make time travel so potentially hazardous. I wondered if Graham I had come to regret building the time window in the first place. Okay, Michelle. Let's try again. And this time, I won't let myself get distracted. Eh, I was thinking I'll take a pass on, beating you, on you beating me again th at this thing. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate the distraction, but getting my butt handed to me over and over is not the best distraction I could have. I can relate to that, but Michelle, how can you play a game anyway? I thought that Gramps and the others modified the time window so I can control all of its system. Even while I'm stuck like this, on top of that I can also work any machine that's linked to the time window. Even though I'm trapped, I can at least watch me movies, play video games. And she can still control the time window and do her old job. So it's not like we need anybody to replace her. It was clear that tensions and bad blood had been rising steadily in my absence. Hey, relax, Kyo. Just because I can still work the machine doesn't mean there doesn't mean there's any substitute for having a warm body to handle things here, just in case there's a malfunction. And we do need someone here to work all the menu manual overrides you've all installed, just in case of a system failure. In case you were wondering, Tessa, Michelle just endorsed you filling in for her. While Tessa was making a noise of comprehension, I looked back at Michelle. What about you, Michelle? How are you holding up? As well as, I, as can be suspected, I guess. I mean, it helps having stuff hooked into the time window, but staring at these same walls day in, day out, and I have to admit it feels really weird not having to eat or sleep or anything like that. I nodded my understanding. Not my, we're not correcting anything. I'm not as good either. I've, fuck, I've terribly misunderstood words. Anyway, as Michelle watched, solemnly rolled her eyes folded her arms under her chest and despite everything I found my eyes drawn to her vulpal, vulpal body to mammoth curls bulging from her chest so huge that they were larger than her head yeah they are the skimpy time suit she, she wore hardly kept her massive bust in check and I couldn't help but wonder how much strain the fabric could time suit Wait a second. And what are you looking at? Ack! Don't think I didn't notice you staring at them, you perv. Michelle flashed me a mischievous smile before inhaling deeply, thrusting out her chest towards me. Oh, 